Okay, so here we are starting up a new project. You can see that I'm just doing a quick check to make sure that as I spin the car around that it stays uh, in the field of view of the camera. So I'm just moving it around a little bit. And it looks like it should be fine in this camera position. Also note on the, the left side of the screen how you can see uh, whether it's in the optimal or good range for how close I am. Now you'll notice from the back of the car where you can't see a lot of defining details and I hit start, it's red and there's not a lot of frame count on the top right and it just won't do anything. Uh, so I want to take this as an opportunity to showcase how that's not a, a good habit for a successful scan. But if you start on the side where you have a lot of information like this, you'll notice immediately the frames go up quite a bit and it has a lot more features to, to kind of lock in on and really help as you start to scan. And the, the first little bits as you turn it are seemingly really important to make sure that it can track well, uh, which helps you not only to be able to go a little bit faster, faster, but to get a better quality scan out of it. And you'll notice uh, as I get around to the back of the car where we had some difficulty early on, I, I will slow down a little bit, but we'll be able to scan this time because it has enough reference points otherwise to maintain tracking. So we're going to do two revolutions of the car this time. And this is going to be completely with a turntable only. And really the point of the video is to showcase what the quality difference is if you only use a fixed call it, view of the object you're scanning in the turntable versus adding some freehand into the mix. And really this started because I was, I was happy with the quality of scans I was getting for the most part, but I always thought it should be a little bit better. Um, as I've continued to develop my skill, I've I found some tricks that I wanted to share. So part of my workflow is once I get a scan in, I like to circle around the object and then hit the inverse options to get rid of everything else. And then I will take the resolution to the lowest setting, the smallest, and the sensitivity to the highest setting. That way I can try and get the best quality scan out of it. Of course, that, that does make the scan take a little bit longer, but it produces better results. Yeah, and if you've ever noticed on your scans uh, a little bit of extra orange peel or some things on the skin where it just looks like noise, then watching this video should really help you. At least it, it helped me, and I've done it quite a few times and found it to be fairly consistent. All right, so the point cloud optimization is almost done here. We'll take a quick look. And the reason why I wanted to scan the bottom of the car this time is to try and get a look at the, the lettering and the, the words at the bottom of the car. So the point cloud looks okay. Obviously you can see some areas that aren't perfect on it. But for what we're looking at, this will work out just fine. And we're going to be running the, the mesh in a consistent setting uh, between all of these just to minimize any variability that might influence the results. So here we've got the mesh. We'll zoom in here. And you'll see, you can see that there are words here and there are letters. And if you know what you're reading, you might be able to kind of make it out. But it's just not quite as good of quality as I was hoping to get out of the scanner. So we're going to run a new scan. You'll see I start on the, the side here. That way I can get good tracking, good frames. And this time we're not going to turn the car as many times all the way around. Uh, but we're going to turn, of course, enough to, to get a good view of the car. And then we're going to add a little bit of freehand in. So 
So if you have a, a 3D scanner and a 3D printer, you might notice that my turntable spacer here is just a, an extra a filament that I had laying around, a, a used roll. So if you're trying to find something to do with those extra rolls laying around, there's an option. Okay, so I did one revolution instead of two, and now you can see I'm doing some freehand. So I'm going over the parts of the car that are of interest, trying to pay attention to where the, the field of view is on the camera, as well as the distance, um, trying to stay as much as I can in the optimal area. And so this has one revolution less of the car, and then some freehand. And then the, the nice thing about my grip that you've seen in, in the prior videos, and I'll talk about a little bit later, is it's easy to hit the, uh, the play stop button while scanning. Okay, so same deal as usual. I will circle around the object of interest, invert, and then delete the other items maximize the resolution sensitivity to get the best quality scan possible. And then we'll let this run through and we'll do a, a quick comparison uh, of the, the point clouds and then we'll mesh in the same settings so that we can see if there's any quality difference between these two. I'm just showing the mount system that I have. So you've got the grip so you can scan tethered. I've got the, the phone mount on the back of it just for when I scan in a mobile. And then you've got the angled adapter that I've got. The bottom of it actually folds up so it'll sit flat if I want it to. But it's been very useful for a lot of these scans. And I, I still absolutely like using this holder and the turntable, especially to initially get the tracking and the main part of everything focused in before going handheld. I find it, it produces easier, more consistent results. So, as you can see on the screen, the point cloud came up, so we're just running the mesh now. And depending on how close you're paying attention, you might already be able to see a difference in the quality of scan here just from the point cloud alone. So here is the mesh. And we will zoom in and take a peek at the visibility of the letters on the bottom. And you should be able to tell that uh, immediately the quality is better. Right? It's not absolutely perfect, but you can start to read the text and the letters uh, quite well and it's not very noisy and we'll just do a little comparison here looking at the total number of faces both of the mesh and of the point cloud so you can see that there's nothing dramatically different between the two it's just that the quality of scan is better when you add in some freehand and here's just comparing the meshes so you can see with the freehand, you can read a little bit better. Freehand and turntable, but if you're only using the turntable, uh, the quality is just not quite as good. And so if you've been not totally satisfied with the results using a turntable, try adding a little bit of freehand and, and hopefully with a good comfortable grip. And I'm pretty sure you'll, you'll see an improvement to the quality of your scans. Anyhow, thank you for watching, and if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave a note below.